Hey everybody, welcome to game number three of the Pro Elf Run. We've got to win the draw, and you know, we were quite enjoying them, but now we've run into dwarfs. Boo, boo dwarfs, boo them, boo them right in their dwarfy little faces. Um, they've got 13 players, they've got a random grab, boo. they've got a troll slayer, no, sorry, a lineman who has a mighty boat and juggernaut. I'm thinking at least one of those is random. Uh, yeah, one's random. And then they have a troll slayer. Like a fog the with boobies. 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 <laughs> boobies. <laughs> Scotty. Um, we've got uh, our team, which for not much less money has almost nothing. <laughs> this is what elves look like at 1.08 million. We've got two blitzers and two catches. And we've got Spleggy with his shadowing skill. This is what the dwarfs look like at 1.111, so barely more expensive. They've got 13 players and they've got some skills, including a mighty bow. Why, why are dwarfs? That's all I'm asking. Why are they? The good news is we haven't got much dodge, so at least we're not, we're not wasting dodge skill. I might go offense first and Daka. I think if we want to win, we're probably better off going defense first. But I think winning's going to be real hard, and maybe, maybe we're better off to take the ball and see if we can do a Daka while we have a full squad. Daka won't be easy because, again, we've only got two catches so far, so our movement is not high. Which is, yeah, it's a real... I've talked about this a bunch. Like, I think I've probably talked about it almost too much with Ravs, but they're just not as fast as you think they're going to be until you've got all the catches. Once you've got all the catches, they're nicely fast, but until then, it's a lot of movement six. We have 12 players. I thought they were 13 players. I think I was... Uh, oh, they have a block running as well. I missed that. I think I think they had just numbered down to 13, but they must have had a gap on the roster. They look like what they're doing, these dwarves. They look like they're randoming skills for random first skills and then cycling. I'm guessing that's why they only have a couple of players leveled. Which I think is a pretty sensible way to play dwarves, probably. In, the, in this rule set with the random skills. They're just, they're just such a... They're like a team really built to do the random skills. And I think that's kind of the biggest problem with the random skills in this edition of the game. It's just that some teams are much better built to use them than others. So, like, it really suits some teams to be able to... to random away. But others can't so much get away with it. Nobody deep because we're not worried about a deep kick. A deep kick we can go and get later. High kick is lovely though. I would really love to be able to vanity pass here. Because we uh, do just need one more SVP on this player for a level. But passing is now 4 plus for Prague for catches. And uh, therefore, not a thing I want to do too much. It's an easy way to lose the ball at the start of a drive. Oh. 
the Jacka begins. I was going to take Prowls to UK to see, but now I'm still on four points behind PW for number one snuffling in the UK. Now I'm thinking of stupid ideas. Tell us about these stupid ideas. Is it just snuffling with Morg? I don't know what's allowed in them in UK to see because I'm not going. So I haven't looked at the rules. There are no sensible ways to play dwarfs. Well, I mean, that's true. Sensible is perhaps the wrong word here. Dwarfs are so boring, Ajax. They're just boring. They're good, but they're boring. Oh, Dizzy, I missed your uh, comment about chalk ices. My mum went through a phase of only getting chalk ices, so we tried a few different ones. What is the top tier chalk ice? Oh, I wish I'd seen that sooner when they took my ice creams. I would like to know. I would like to know what the number one chalk ice is. So if I, so if I do decide I want a chalk ice in the future, I can make the correct choice. Oh man, what if Dizzy's gone and we never get the answer? I'll be left eating substandard chalk ices forever. Do you know we don't target? And um, I've even lived in America and I still don't actually know what a fudgesicle is. Like, what is a fudgesicle? So, with the movement of five, they can get to there in theory. Do you know what? I'm going to say to them. If you want a double rush for that one hit, let me do it. Uh, no, no stars in UKTC, and you're thinking about snotlings? Can't lie, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued at what a no star snotling team would be. There's a few follows all at once happening. Sorry, I will check those out in a second, just taking this turn. Thank you for uh, the follows, Mudara and Big Dan. Big Dan! It's, I was wondering if that's the Big Dan, who I've met IRL. Uh, I am at Thread this weekend. Are you at Thread as well? Frozen fudge on a stick, basically. Yeah, like a chocolate ice cream on a stick with a great thick texture. Ooh, yum. Sounds pretty good. Madara yes, was so hoping after one of the mainstream. Was it, was he, um, oh, you were the first opponent. Thank you for the game belatedly. Was it the first one? Or was that a later one? I can't remember. Um, I think, I think I only won the first one three now. Unless I'm getting mixed up. First game. That was the one where I got, um, I got stabbed from the kickoff and I stabbed your ghoul, didn't I? Thank you belatedly for the game. Hope the rest of your tournament has gone better. It's a pretty rough start. You can stack on Santis plus movement, agility, stilty. That's for um, UKTC. So the first UKTC I went to, Thulian, they did the same thing. And I had a goblin pogo with their movement and agility up, I think. And it was... I mean, the thing is, they're still goblins, right? So, like, they were still goblins. <laughs> but that player definitely did some fun work. And it, it makes some really fun one turn options. Because with a movement 8, agility uh, 2 plus Pogoa, you can do, like, pushing. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, I think I think when I did it, I just literally copied Yudhagar. I think I literally just, like, Yud I was looking at it, and Yudhagar was saying he's doing that. And I was like, okay, can I do the same thing? Will you be mad if I copy you? Um. So how do you approach getting past the defense with this? I never understand so much in a station. So they've played aggressive. So there's two ways you generally see opponents play on uh, against Blacker. Either they uh, sit back and they play passive or they're aggressive. And I mean, there isn't really a choice here. We're going to have to push into them at some point. Um, and uh, they're far enough up here that we're going to have to do it now. 
And uh, the answer is you um, take your hits and you try to create a gap. And while it's not going to feel good as elves getting to that point of base contact, you were going to have to do that anyway, right? You're going to have to do the base contact even if you uh, didn't sit back. And um, the good thing here is... Um, like the one upside to having the base contact is once you've got it no, actually that's just there. Um, it becomes harder for them to stay in the right shape so once you've started hitting things it's much harder for them to keep in that neat shape and what you're trying to do is to make them uh, leave you a hole somewhere it doesn't always work like like all these strategies are reliant on making the right decisions at the right times and also getting the right dice at the right times but that's the um that's the general idea, yeah? is to uh, move them, move them with blitzes, and same as any other elf drive, you do a bit of moving side to side, looking for your gap. You as a wizard. You as a goblin. Yud's, Yud's an incredible goblin coach, so that's why when I heard that's what he was doing that year, I was like, okay, I'll just do what Yudlegar does, <laughs> and I'll do it. That's what I think he won Sunday Cup that year. So, yeah. That was, I don't think it was like necessarily like a good build, because, um, because uh, it's still goblins. But what I did, because I, I, so I copied him on the pogo, I didn't copy his whole roster. Because what I did was I gave my uh, ball and chain um, sure feet as well, which was super aggressive. But I just thought it'd be really funny having like a, a, a ball and chain that could move five squares a lot of the time. And uh, the problem was in game one, I uh, had. Um, it was one all against orcs and they had the ball and I had a chance to open the cage up and uh, then my um yeah this is this is the this is the thing really and then my uh, fanatic rolled uh, both bounds so if it could just roll a push I had two dice on the ball but it didn't roll a push it rolled both bounds and so then I thought maybe I should have given it block <laughs> <laughs> Maybe block would have been than sure feet. But sure feet is fun. Sure feet is like super enjoyable to get to be like, damn, she keep going further. Anyone try to brawl a fanatic? <laughs> I thought I was laughing, but actually, hang on, how does brawl even work? Like, does Brawler work on Fanatics? Because there's anything... Yeah, so actually Brawler Fanatics sounds like maybe it could be quite good. Because I was thinking of it like a Blitz, but it's not a Blitz. It's a it's a block, so... Okay, so here is a turn where we have some options. I'm not saying they're amazing options, but we have some options. The option that I'm looking at is... Because they've done some basing... They've left a couple of spots where we could potentially uh, punch our way through. One way is put a player here, blitz here, and then you potentially got a gap around that side. Another way, which I think I like better, but it's a bit risky because it probably needs a knockdown here, is to go try to go through the middle. But I like it better because if we make it, we're going to have much better movement forward. So I'm going to try for this, even though it's got um, some risk attached to it. Um, how is real, real nice. So now we've made a gap. 
And we're going to send elves through that gap. And maybe, uh, maybe I should have taken the risk and move that soon because now I've only got three elves to move through the gap. But still, dwarves are slow. So hopefully we can do enough with this. It's going to give up some hits, but it will keep a lot of players not moving. Do not hate. Or that gives us more players coming through. I like that, obviously. And roll the dice on this side. I wish you could do like a double jump over. I want to jump over both of these. I want to do like a huge jump over from there to there. I don't know, so maybe I could have done that better, but we've got we've got some players through. That's what we're trying to do. So we'll see. Mm. Ajax, so there's kind of like it's really difficult to say, and I always find this in Bubble when people are asking about specific situations, it's it's often really hard to give you the right answer because every game of Blood Bowl is different and the positions are different. Um what I would say is um you um if they're not basing you at some point you have to base them like yeah like at some point if, if they're not going to give do that for you you have to do, you have to initiate it and obviously you don't want to do it too soon with elves because if you do it too soon things can go real bad but at some point that's the choice you have to make I have got a one dice here with a runner, which I may go for. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's a dodge and two rushes. Maybe I could have pushed this further this way. I was maybe a little bit careless, but they won't have great recovery on it if we do get it. I did think about handing off so we had it on the dodger at least instead of this one, but it's all more dice to roll. Okay, they're not going for that. They're just going to hit this one down. Okay. Use Juggernaut. Use Juggernaut. Use the Juggernaut. Use it. Juggernaut makes it a push. Use the Juggernaut. No! <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> oh, Rosal won. Oh, no, not. Oh, a skull here as well, going for the one dice. Into a push, they've used two rerolls now. They have freed up this player, which is pretty important. Not where I would have put it. I think I would have gone for on the outside of that. I think if you're on the outside of that, then I've really only got the one player free. Push it. I would have dodged that as well, because that's your fastest player, and now that's going to... As long as I don't snake, that player is now not very relevant. As long as I don't snake, famous last words. I mean, I think we're going to have to roll a two plus somewhere here, right? So maybe the correct option is just to do it with a ball carrier and go. Uh, another option would be to do it uh, here. And then we can blitz with... No, because we're still going to have to... No, we're definitely doing the, door, the ball carrier dodge. So yeah, this is, I think, just a just don't snake situation, please. All right. And now the ball is going to be out of range for almost every dwarf. I think this one probably can still base it, yeah. So the Daka has more or less succeeded, I say, tempting fate as aggressively as I can. Um, I think I want to hit. I mean, on the one hand, that leaves new base players, but that's their only runner. And we can get two dice on it. Um, hmm. 
How did someone get here though? Die runner. Didn't die. The sadness. I think I'm still okay to spend another reroll here because the ball is gone. We actually could have gone for a serve on that, but I think it's more sensible to bring a buddy while we can. And Alright. Mm. Ball is gone. We'd like some more bubble three events, I think we do the mm. What are we talking about? Do you know if there's more sorry, Midara, I missed your question a while ago. I'm so sorry. Uh, do you know if there's more not tournaments part of NAF tournaments? I've been out of four years and kind of out of the community. Uh, Midara, you've had some questions, some answers there already, but what I would say is what kind of tournament are you looking for? Do you just mean excuse me, like the NAF style tournament where it's like the one um the uh where you do the um resurrection style? Or do you mean like any competition? Because there are leagues where you have development and you gain SVP and, and add skills. So like Rebels, a league that I play in, I think is really fun. And there are other le leagues like that, like UK BBL and um, TL BBL and BBT. There's like loads and loads of leagues. So if you're looking for leagues, there's lots. In terms of that style where players, where injuries don't stick, the resurrection format, and you just build one roster, I'm not really aware of many. There is the Super League. Um, that is invite only, unfortunately. I was uh, kindly invited to that this season by Jimmy, but I, I haven't been invited to that before this season. Um, so uh, I, uh, I don't know of any others, but there might be. Um, I think it would be great if there were more. I think that um, I have even thought myself, I wonder about running that sort of tournament sometime because I think that it's a really fun style of Blood Bowl resurrection format. I think I enjoy it more than, uh, much more than ladder, definitely. Um, so it would be nice if there were more opportunities to play that kind of Blood Bowl. But yeah, at the moment, I'm, uh, I'm not aware of others. Well, this is the price we paid for trying to kill the runner. We gave up some hits we didn't need to give up. Going for rushes, failing last reroll. It's for a 1D. Gets there but does not uh, knock us over. Yeah, Super League is only in bites. Okay, so we can move the ball out of range pretty easily, so let's do that. Everything else here now is a little bit more hairy.
looking for a tea bag. Yeah, on on uh, on uh, Fumble, there's lots more tournaments like that. I don't know if you use Fumble, but it would be good if Blood Bowl Three had more tournaments like that. It really would. Tabletop Blood Bowl is the way to go. It's definitely the best way to go. Tabletop Blood Bowl is the one. Nothing about Fumble is hard to sign up. Fumble is. It's not hard to sign up. I do think... Oh, double skull. Okay, well, that's going to make it a nice plain say out of the end of the game. End of the half, sorry. Um, I do think Fumble is quite hard to understand as a new player the first time you go to it. When I first went to Fumble, I was like, it could do with some... Maybe And maybe they exist, but they're not well signposted enough. Like, it could, I was just thinking, like, it could do with some slightly better, like, this is what to do if you're brand new here and you've never even seen this before because it's it's very simple it runs off java it's not visually very beautiful but it does have like all the correct rules it's better on the rules and like a more authentic blood bowl experience i guess than um than blood bowl 3 is i mean they cannot hit this ball right it's so sod it Let's have one more try at trying to kill this runner. Dead runner? Sadly not. Ah, oh, Mudara, thank you so much for the prime sub. Welcome to the weirdos. No, 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 Bad Bell Nut. I'm not a banger, I'm just an enthusiastic disliker of dwarfs. And so, dwarves specifically, we have to uh, punch them in the face. It's just, it's just the way it is. And I don't even think the Blood Bonnet agrees with me. Uh, disagrees with me, sorry. Blood Bonnet disagrees with many things, and he's wrong about all of them. But I don't think even he is pro dwarf. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> well, quite. Mm. That's another league with development by Bonnet. That's not what Madara is asking for. Madara is asking for resurrection style tournaments. Because there are leagues on Bubble 3 if that's what you want, but... So, with the mighty blow. They've been very thorough basing everything up here, but there's absolutely no chance that I'm rolling any guys next turn because I've got no reroll. I'm just scoring on Freezing Star. <laughs> uh, sorry, Kalon. Yes, it's fantasy football. It's definitely not the same thing. <laughs> It's definitely not exactly the same thing with the correct rules. <laughs> it's something unique and different. Are you going to make it happen, Blood Bowl Nat? If you build it, they will come. 
If you build it, they will come. Be, be the change you want to see in the world. Also, be the change you want to see in the world. Also, dwarfs, tier zero. No skills. TV 900, zero skills. <laughs> <laughs> no, not because of how many events they win, but because I personally dislike them, Caelan. <laughs> Your reasons are all wrong. Honestly, like, I shouldn't say this on a term of fate because I'm going to Thread this weekend and I'll end up playing Dwarves in every single game. But um, I, I actually feel like you really don't see Dwarves that much in tabletop tournaments lately. Um, I feel like they used to show up much more. And I don't know why exactly that is. Because in some ways you'd think they might become more popular again because Amazon's popular and, and they count them a bit. But I think the... To be honest, Dwarf's main problem in tabletop tournaments is just that Orcs are better. Like, if we want to talk about what's actually too good, Orcs are way too good. <laughs> in terms of doing what they do. But, um... Well, you say that, j -Lev, but plenty of people were playing Underworld when they were good. <laughs> some of us stopped when we worked it out but some people didn't including some people in chat right now who I judge continuously I didn't use the mine zones but then I had to play against zones with imperial ability at Andy's tournament and it made me a bit resentful <laughs> <laughs> trying to play um, trying to play uh, Imperial Nobility against Amazon made me feel just deeply upset <laughs> it's almost like that's an Imperial Nobility problem more than an Amazon problem <laughs> Are we doing any more uh, supermarket simulators today, Keith? I've lurked in a few supermarket simulator streams. They're fun. I don't understand though why no one nicks your boxes when you leave them out on the road. You've got all these loose boxes of product and no one comes along and says, oh, I'll have that. <laughs> What the F am I supposed to do now is what drives me. Uh, KO does get caught, it's just Lyman, so we're not having that. They've got a bench anyway, so that's fair enough, they've argued for anyway, so. I hate freezing star. Uh, yeah, it goes pretty good. We won our last game. Unfortunately, we then have been made to play against dwarves, which obviously is a sad time for everyone. Sad time for the whole Blood Bowl community because dwarves are on the pitch. But uh, we did a Dakar, so that was good. 
And now we will see if we can defend with town. I think it's going to be tough because they're dwarfs. And they've got a full roster and they've got some mighty bow. And we're pros. But we're going to try. You're on this team, Freezing Star. In fact, you just got a touchdown. You just got the touchdown that if you live to the end of the game, which is an if, but if you do, we'll get you your first skill. I do get great enjoyment out of it, in fairness, moving my box around, chatting, shy, easy fun. Good. That's the whole point, isn't it? That's like what, what we're doing this stuff for. It looks fun, honestly. Like, I think it looks fun. Don't tell Dimmy, but I think it looks more fun than the farming simulator. I did watch Dimmy a bit when he played the farming simulator. I thought it was a bit too much like work. Driving a tractor looks stressful. I'm playing a lunch game and I've officially killed a dwarf. I like to hear that. Uh, so we're just going to stick you there so your frenzy's a bit worse. Oh my god, chat. I've had a great idea. <laughs> Spoiler, it's not actually a great idea. What if... What if this, right? What if we... put that there, and now, if that hits, we're going to shadow it. Pretty great, hey? Pretty cool to do a shadowing on a frenzy. Uh, Mudara, there is a Discord, and if you, uh, um, I think there's a Discord link on my homepage, isn't there? Hopefully that works, uh, and if you get on my Discord and then you give yourself the Blood Bowlers role, then you'll get tagged with all of my Blood Bowl streams, but also, I didn't for the first one, but I will try to put all my Super League games in the Schedule Games, uh, channel as well. Um, the other, uh, thing you can do is if you're not worried about watching them live um, they will all go on my YouTube channel um, not like immediately but they will all go there eventually as well once the shop has worn off we're moving on to Power Wash Sim I've never played Power Wash Sim Collie was very enthusiastic for a while and it did look fun I could see how it would look quite satisfying <laughs> it's amazing how cleaning things in a simulator looks fun. Doing the dishes, less fun. <laughs> well, last hit here. And no removals on the line. That's pretty nice. Okay. Ten players to defend with is pretty nice. I mean, it's still hard because they're dwarfs. And once they pick the ball up, it gets very hard. But. But. Ten players is definitely better than fewer than ten players. So let's see what happens. Have you tried using a power washer on your dishes? Do you know, I used to have a neighbour where I was renting before. I used to have a neighbour who had like a a part, like a, a jet washer thing, like a pressure washer. And uh, he'd spray down the windows with it. Because he was really lovely. And I was always a bit jealous. It looked fun. I wish I could clean my house. The pressure washer not break everything cause soaking damage. I live in the cleanest place ever. Yeah. Um... All right, let's get rowdy. I, mean, I feel like we've got nothing to lose from here, right? Because we've gone one and up. So um, we're unlikely to lose the game. We might draw. 
But if we get in the dwarf's faces with sidestep, you never know. We could get lucky. Probably we won't, but we could. And that's the point. Let's live in the universe where lucky can happen. <laughs> I say before rolling up on it. <laughs> F's in chat. Probably shouldn't re-roll that, but I'm worried it's on my catch and I don't want my catch getting. Uh, don't want my catch getting punched, but it doesn't have to, so. And that is an important lesson in not assuming nice things can happen. <laughs> Double skulls, quad skulls, oh <gasps> not quad skulls, but they haven't powered us. Do well, we're giving them another hit wherever we go, aren't we? So we are going to give them another hit. In which case, I think we, I think maybe we go here weirdly. I think this gives them a bit of a dilemma about where the ball goes because we put it on the board and they just got to hit it. Whereas if we go here, then they're probably going to move the ball first. But the team's a bit split. We also have more better size of options for after this hit, so. I mean, if you play the Hunting Little People game, too much you could remember the special watch, but what's the Hunting Little People game? I really want to sidestep in, but I think they will foul me. Like, if I sidestep in, Sod it. Fowls can fail, fowls can go the same day. JD is a killer, hides behind that baby face. Yeah, it's an immovable. It doesn't surprise me actually. It's like Rick, isn't it? the ones you never suspect. Yeah, that's the thing, Carthor. And like sometimes if you're gonna if you're gonna do it, you've got to commit to it, right? Like you can't um you can't I think that's really like um something I remember Andy saying, which I, I really agree with. Like if you're going to be aggressive you kind of can't do it half assed. You have to really be aggressive. And I'm not even sure I was aggressive enough, but I think um I think uh, that was a situation to, to try to keep the pressure on. Okay, I was going to say, if you don't lose that, then I've just got a hit on the ball next time if I can do a free pass. But we just go for it. And I removed it. Okay. So we're on nine. I saw JD punch a baby once. Listen, I don't know what's allowed up there in Canada. We frown upon that over here. So, you know. Alright, so, again, I'm not necessarily thinking this is, like, amazing, super winning strat. But I think that if we sit tight, we're just going to lose. So, what I'm seeing here is using this conveniently placed body we can do a four plus to have a oh it's a five plus is that zone as well damn it oh i thought that was a four plus i was thinking for a four plus on the ball maybe maybe we don't do it then i don't know though i'm still kind of tempted just to do it because i think we're going to run out of players one way or another like we're not stalling this out right like it's dwarves they've got the ball in a cage Let's just be rowdy. Let's just be rowdy. If we're doing it, we're doing it. Ah. Five plus 55% land. 
if you've got the reroll. Boo. Mm. But yeah, I, I just don't think we were going to get this by being cautious, so try the aggressive play. Maybe it was too aggressive, but maybe there were other lines. die. Don't die, Freezing Star. You've just got a level. Don't you do it. Don't you die on me. I think we saved the last reroll for the one turn try now. It's just not really a good matchup with dwarves against uh, with prowls against dwarves when you've got so little going on. Like it gets gets a little better when you've got some useful skills. I mean, it's always going to be a bad matchup because dwarves take away what the prowls do well. But once you've got more skills, um, like wrestle, wrestle's a really nice skill to have against some dwarves. Um, maybe some more dangerous skills on the blitzers. Um. And then better one turning options. I think you have more outs. Because, like, we're not going to lose unless they go for a win. Which I doubt they will because they're dwarfs. So the one turn is always there for, like, a chance of, of winning at the end anyway. Uh, thanks for the follow, Miyaski Grizzly. Welcome. The players on the ground. Yeah, I don't have a thrower yet, which I will have eventually. I honestly think we're just not going to get out the rest of this ride, we'll see. Because at this point, just having players available for the one turn is probably the thing. I don't know, like maybe I should have made more of an effort to do a bit of buff stalling first and then you create different opportunities as they push forward. I, I don't think the way I played it was like the only way you could play it. I think there were options. I am perhaps playing a little bit like loose. I think I'm feeling quite sort of impatient, which is why I went for the more aggressive line, but I'm not sure I did it well. Um, but I think at this point with the one reroll, I'd rather keep hold of it and give myself that chance at least of doing a one turn could also get a time up these things do happen I talk about my game yesterday, I didn't. Uh, I wasn't particularly planning to, but yes, I uh, I had um, I had my local tabletop final yesterday against a coach, really good coach Neil, who I uh, have played a whole heap of times, never beaten. Played him in the final last season and lost to him then. And uh, it's been a bit of a thing with Neil, where uh, we have these really close games, and then at the end, like something always happens that. Uh, just swings it. Uh, so, like, uh, when I played him in the final last season, it had been a really close game. It got to turn 23, so deep into overtime. And then I uh, had a chance to um, hit the ball. 
because he was playing pro elves, I was on Norse, I had a chance at the ball and I snaked. Um, then I played him earlier this season and uh, I, I'm on Wood Elves, he's on Vampires and I'd got it to, uh, I'd got it to um, one all and I was top of the division at the time and actually as it turned out if I'd won that game if I'd drawn that game Neil wouldn't have made playoffs but one all on turn 16 and then I rolled a timeout so he beat me again and so yes we played the final uh so what else against vampires and I managed to get myself um two one up on turn 16 It'd be a really really fun game so like Neil scored on like turn four of his drive I scored and scored back on uh on my uh, turn seven, I think. So he started one turn, but um, in the end didn't go for it. Um, the tree nearly got sent off because of uh, Fisher's Wrath. And then um, I managed to do an eight turn drive in the second half against uh, against his vampires. And he used all his rerolls. It was a really like difficult one. Like he played well, like it was a tough drive. He sacked the ball at one point, but I managed to get the scatter. Um, so yeah, scored on turn 16, and uh, then for the second time this season, Neil got a turn 16 timeout, literally exactly the same as when we played the previous time. So like, I am fully thinking like this guy, just it's never going to happen. Whenever I play Neil, something will always happen that that uh, takes it away. So yeah, turn 16 timeout. He does the two turn score. It was amazing because vampires obviously like even with two turns, ones are such a big threat for them. Um, but he, um, I think he rolled like four ones, but managed to roll them all in the places where he can handle them. Like he was able to like um, either use dodge skill or just bite someone with bloodlust and it was all right. Um, so he got the score and so it was two all going into overtime and he won the coin toss. And I think I had eight elves and then I also had... Um, is there an app I now? I think it might be. I have one turn. Uh, he had. Uh, I had Carrie Coldsteel, who's like a cheerleader who you can bring on the pitch when you're out of players. So I brought her onto the pitch, and uh, I. Um, yes, yeah, so I brought on Carrie Coldsteel. So I had eight players for Carrie Coldsteel. He had a full eleven. In fact, he had like a whole bunch on the bench, and he won the coin toss. So he gets one offense, and I'm like, okay. It's written in the stars. In the end, Neil always gets the breaks against me. Um, but, of course, the vampires did still have no rerolls. And so, like, just, like, slowly, slowly, he, like, starts to eat his thralls. And I'm just desperately trying to, like, keep my elves in front. But, like, he... Because uh, he's got five vampires. And um, uh, and he can't move forward without rolling dice. He's got no rerolls. He starts eating the thralls and he... He was rolling the, the injuries for them, but he started rolling quite high on the injuries for them, so he's KOing them and injuring them. And like this half was just all so tense. And there was a turn when he could have gone forward, but then the ball carrier blood lasted, so it had to go backwards. And then by the end, he was down to like four elves and um sorry, four vampires and no thralls. And so now I've got all my elves just mobbing them, trying to make something go wrong. And I had literally seven two dice blocks on the ball, couldn't knock it over. <laughs> Um, finally knocked it over on turn 23 uh, and uh, but I had because, because I'd taken like seven sets of dice on the ball I had literally no elf left to pick it up so the ball just scatters onto the floor the next turn he rolls bloodlust on he fails bloodlust on the player who's going to pick the ball up for him which is a thrower so he was going to punt it but you can't throw once you fail bloodlust so he picks the ball up and he did a really smart thing I thought which he just ran to the sideline he ran to the sideline and did a couple of rushes. And um, so then when he fails the bloodlust, you have to drop the ball and the ball scatters out of bounds. Um, but luckily the ball, if they chucked it like up the pitch, I would never have seen it again. But they didn't, they chucked it um, straight down the middle. So I still had to pick the ball up and throw it with no rerolls. Um, and I was 100% certain that was gonna be a one on the pickup because uh, again, my history with Neil but uh, it didn't happen I rolled the two plus I was able to do the pass with pass with the catch skill and so I, I won 
the local tabletop league, which was nice because uh, I've been close in a lot of seasons recently. But basically what always happens is I run into Neil <laughs> um, and something happens. Uh, not just Neil, actually. There's another coach called Dan who's also really good. And Dan's a, a great um, like anomaly because he's a really good football player who doesn't play NAF at all doesn't play online at all he just plays in like our local league he's done one NAF tournament did well in it but that was when it was local I've never done it um, and uh, and he was dominating the league for a while but he decided to switch to half things to stop himself from winning all the time um, and so yeah it was a uh, it was an exhausting game I mean I think a lot of you like have seen me in recent times I've had a couple of online turn 24 losses so like turn 24 does not feel like my friend <laughs> when you add that into the turn 24 loss against Neil last season and all the endings I was like yeah this this only ends one way right so it was nice that finally one of them one of them went my way because 24 turns of blood ball against vampires is really long that's a lot of thinking um and on a really hot day as well well the apo backfired but at least it's not dead. So we've got a 50-50 to have a catcher on the pitch. Maybe I should just let it be cleared and had two 50-50s. Maybe I should just let it be cleared. Probably I should. I think I thought it was one fewer turn than they had, so... So yes, Collie was just wanting me to tell my success story. I'm not five on kicks, lifetime bud. Well, oh, that is rough. That is real. Rough. But like, it was a really fun game. Neil's a really fun person to play against. Um, oh, we have got a catch effect, so the one turns possible. Um, Neil's a, he's a really fun player to play against. He's a really good player. He's a really lovely player. Um, and I'm not at all like. Um, I'm not at all like uh, suggesting he's undeserving of all the wins he's got against me because he's he's really good. Um, but it has just always felt like we've joked about it a lot. Like it's always felt like this. When it's close, um, there's always there's always going to be something at the end that gets him uh, gets annoyed against me. So it was nice for once for it not to go that way. Had a hell of a game yesterday. I couldn't roll too fast, save my life for most of the first half. Missed out on basically three turns, one of which was a 1D on the ball. No! Have an edge one plus strip with Wrestle. Nice. Kept cage diving into him. Turn eight, finding up to lose scattered pitch and couldn't score. Nice, well done. Tabletop's the best. Tabletop is just the best, as we've been saying. I think it's a pretty good setup to make it hard. We've got eight players. Um, can, I think like we feels like we have to do the whole method here and I don't know if we've got enough to do the whole method well. Um, we're going to want to... Yeah, I don't even know if we can do this honestly. Put you there. I'm going to want to step onto that and put it into there which would be a one dice. So let's just say it works. Push in here. Then we've got the second one here. Goes there. And you're going to need... So the uh, dwarf has gone to here. Well, the good thing is here is, here is that you'd be able to just do the second next hit from here. But then you need to fill that square to force and forwards. I think it's possible. I think it's... Very unlikely, but I think it's possible. And I think we do have to do one nice here. Fill that. This can't be you that fills. So we've gone. Boop boop boop. You've gone here. 
and then you kick up so you'll be here yeah it's possible it's possible definitely hard quick snap would help that is not a quick snap <laughs> that is the opposite of a quick snap <laughs> I think that will almost certainly end it, but you never know, they might they might make a mistake and sometimes people make a mistake and give you a different option that they haven't thought of, so it's also a really deep kick, although that could be a touchback I guess. So maybe that could help us if we got lucky, but I think most likely we just won't have a way of doing it once they've changed their setup. Yeah, I'm not sure if a touchback will help us because I don't think we're going to get... I don't think there'll be a way. Well, I suppose there'll be a way. It just won't be a good odds way. Let's just see what it all looks like at the end. There's not a touchback. All right, so... Oh, what does it look like? If we do that and hit here, then we can push into there. Now we haven't got a hole here to push into. Um, we need to fill both of those squares, which we can do. Bring those there. And then we can push up there. I think this is technically possible. But as I said in the last game, if you're going to try, you should really do the pass first. Because you have nerves of steel. Now the pass is going to be a six pass. So it's not going to get any better, I think, even if we do the rushes. So we'll just see if we can do a six plus pass. And if we can, then we'll try the rest. Oh, we burned the six. We used it too soon. We used it too soon. We burned our six. Oh, there was a five as well. <laughs> Did that dwarf just catch it? We just threw it to the dwarf. And it caught it. <laughs> Like, low-key, good pass and catch, just not the right there. I think that was definitely still possible, the 110. I think, I think it was all possible, but it was obviously, like, really stupid hard dice, so. Um, we got a draw. Obviously, draws don't feel as good as wins, but given the matchup, I don't think that's a bad draw at all. And we did get a level on Freezing Star, which will be Dodge, even though... It doesn't do anything against dwarves. It's still what I want to start off my catches. They're just so much more reliable in a lot of situations with dodge. Um, ooh, ooh, we've got 110,000. Do we buy ourselves a third catcher? Could also buy a thrower. Thrower is nice because we can be greedy on it, throw some start passes and try to get leader for a 4-3 roll. Catches are nice because they're just really good and they're definitely like better players than um, definitely better players than uh, throwers. I think I want to do the throw of the catcher. I think I just like getting that um, I like getting that extra speed on the team. Slowness is so much part of the issue for me with um, with pro elves. Um, I think you have much more flexibility with a third catcher. And uh, also, weirdly, like, in the long run, of course, you want the thrower. But if I'm going to be throwing vanity passes on anyone at this point of the team development, I'd almost rather do it on the blitzers because they're three plus passes and I want the SVP on them more. So I think, I think we're going to take an extra catcher. And uh, that is my concern, Bubble Nut. My TV's gone up to 1.2 million and I have, like, no skills. So there's an argument here for doing that and getting rid of um, one of the linemen. But I'm just going to do it because in the end, in this ladder, it doesn't really matter. 
if you lose some games, what matters is, do you eventually get a roster that's going to work for you? So in the short run, it might, um, it might not be great, but I think in the medium to longer term, it makes sense. So we're going to add another catcher. If we customize our catchers, not yet. We probably have got some things to add on them, which I will do later. Uh, I know I have not missed the random, guys. Calm down. Raven can do the random. Now, Raven, if you pay attention, you would have noticed that Spuggy rolled a random that we didn't like, and that made us sad. But you are going to be the hero we need who does roll a good random. Okay? So we had a pep talk. No more shadowing. No. Uh. All of the rest of them you can almost do something with, but you know, really let's go for a good one. So let's go for block or wrestle or dirty fire. That's what we'd like. Frenzy. Do you know what? I can work with Frenzy. I can work with Frenzy. It's not my first choice, but it's kind of fun to have on the team somewhere. Uh, okay. That is the team after three games. We are one, one, and one. If you are watching this on YouTube at some point, and you're enjoying it don't forget to hit that like and subscribe team is now infinitely better right frenzy for the win 